And now, I call upon Eddie. I'll just uh, mention the tape recording that uh, Christine was talking about. There, it was a meeting that we had in the uh, Elm Park Hotel. And looking around here, I think you were there, 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 Claire, you were there. I think that's probably all. It's probably about eight people who were there. And they're trying to claim that at that meeting I was saying that um, uh, I was lying about Nick Griffin stealing money and it was a red herring I was deliberately putting forward. That's why they use this word red herring. What I said was, in fact, that allegations that he was supposed to be stealing is a red herring because there's lots of other financial problems in the party and we don't even have to discuss or think about anyone potentially stealing money. That's not what the issue is. That's what I said. They're trying to make out that I was saying that uh, I invented stories about stealing and the people who were there, and I said there must be about eight of you here now, nothing like that was said at that meeting. Well, that's what they're going, they're touting this tape around because it's a bit inaudible. The bloke who was recording us secretly was sitting at the other end of the table from me and it was only on his phone, I think, so it didn't come out very well. You came out well because you were sitting next to him, didn't you? But, um, anyway, <laughs> I'll uh, start now by going into how this whole situation in the party really developed. For some of you who were at the meeting the other day, it's going to be a bit, bit of repetition. I'll, I'll say other things as well, so it won't be completely the same as what you heard the other day. How this started, it was in mid, only in mid-March, only as recently as mid-March. Uh, Emma Colgate, who some of you know, was the staff manager, and she went to visit Dave Hannum, who was newly appointed as the treasurer in his new office near Hull. He had a new office near Hull to go and see how he was settling into his new office, because she was the staff manager. While she was there, Nick Griffin rings him up, asked him to pay off a credit card debt. There's several different party credit cards in circulation that they live off and do things with, you know, because they need to spend things immediately. There's nothing wrong with that necessarily. Needs it to be paid off, because there are limits on credit cards, aren't there? I don't know, I haven't got a credit card, but I'm told credit cards have got limits. And, uh, he, uh, Dave Hannum said, oh, but that credit card, it's your own private credit card, what you've been paying out for this week's nothing to do with party business. He was, putting, he was digging his heels in a bit. He was new to the job, trying to dig his heels in, being a bit officious. Nick had a bit of a go at him, said, look, this is my, I'm, I'm the boss, you're the treasurer. If I say pay it off, you pay it off. You don't say when or how, you just do it. I don't want any back chat and all this sort of stuff. Dave Hannum answered him back, a bit of a ding-dong. Eventually, Dave Hannum surrendered and was a bit cowed and a bit uh, crestfallen after this conversation, agreed to pay it off. Emma Colgate had been sitting there the whole time. This is just what I've been told. Emma Colgate was sitting there all the time. I think it may have been on the speakerphone. I think she actually heard the entire conversation. And um, Dave Hannum then started saying, oh, there's all sorts of bad things going on in the party to do with the party's finances. Serious, serious stuff. And she tells me soon afterwards what had transpired. I then... I then was national organiser of the party, and I'm not like, you know, I was reason quite, that means you're quite senior in the party, and the only person I could directly report to if, some, if something's told to me of malpractice is actually Nick Griffin, but if the malpractice that I've been told about is about Nick Griffin, I've got really no one to tell, have I? And I was in a, obviously in a bit of a dilemma, I'd also given up a very well paid job to work for Nick Griffin last summer and ra ra raising these sorts of issues with, with him is the fastest way to be thrown out on the scrap heap basically and there's not much in this party you can do because we're a party, we're a top down party the leader has got virtually unlimited power under the constitution of this party virtually unlimited power the only power of restraint over the, the chairman is the possibility of a yearly leadership election or um, two-thirds of the advisory council at an advisory council meeting, 
that he, he's the only one who can call an advisory council meeting, but two thirds of the people at an advisory council meeting can overrule him. So that's the only real power over him. So in discussion, I said, look, if this is true, and we had no, it's only on a, the basis of this conversation between Emma Colgate and um, Dave Hannum, if it's true, I said, we're in the run-up to a general election campaign, we wait until afterwards, if we don't do well, and we don't get all these seats, and we haven't got all the momentum with us, which would make up for everything, frankly, that would make up for everything, wouldn't it? Then we'll have to raise the issue, because we're going into this general election campaign on the basis that all the branches have got to pay for the entire campaign because central office, in the world they've raised £1.9 million, pounds, we're told, last year. They've got no money to pay for the campaign. We had to raise it all ourselves as the branches and the regions. That's a very serious uh, anomaly there, isn't there? And the money, the, the amount of money I was told wasn't 50 quid, wasn't, wasn't, it was a six-figure a six sum. It was a six-figure sum I was told about. A sort of sum that affects your ability to operate. That's what I was told. It's only an allegation. I've got no idea whether it was true, but it's an allegation that was told to me. So you're thinking, what are we going to do? Now, Mark Collette used to be a very close friend of Dave Hannum, and he knew about, he learned about this same situation. So to get confirmation, he was sent to see Mark, um, Dave Hannum to see if he would confirm, to say the same thing twice. When it said once, he you know, it said repeated to see whether it's true. Unfortunately, when Mark Collette went to see Dave Hannum to talk about it, Dave Hannum was recording the conversation. In the, in the course of the con I imagine, if many of you thought there was serious theft going on in this party, don't, I'm not saying who does, who's doing the theft. If you thought someone was seriously stealing a lot of money out of this party, that is given by people who, can't, who can ill afford to give. That's who our donors are. They're people who can ill afford to give. They're not millionaires who give it, get a bit of loose change, a few grand loose change out of their back pocket. We're talking about people who aren't very well off. They're the people who give to our party. Most people, I suspect, if you're told about that, or you think that, or you've got serious grounds for thinking that, you'd be a bit outraged, probably. And in that, that's the context of Mark Collette making these alleged threats to kill to, that was recorded on Dave Hannum's uh, phone or whatever recording device he had on him in this conversation and the blame that Mark Collette put to it and the person he focused his anger on, allegedly, because I've got no way of knowing even if this is true, this is alleged, is uh, Jim Dowse and the fundraising person. So what do we have at the outset of the general election campaign? We have Mark, uh, Dave Hannum giving his tape over to, for whatever reason, for his, whatever reason of his own, to uh, Nick Griffin and Jim Dowson, focusing on the fact, not that we were, had serious concerns over the party's finances, which is the root for the whole thing, but focusing on Mark Collett's angry, alleged, angry and alleged threats to kill the person who he regarded as responsible if we couldn't get an advisory council meeting after the election, which is the only way you can le legitimately deal with it. And so what do they do? They run to the media with a big story at the outset of our general election campaign. Our publicity director is threatening to kill our head fundraiser, our chief fundraiser. And that is why, if you want to know why we, a lot of our votes weren't so clever in the general election and why every time... Nick Griffin or any one of our spokesmen was interviewed in that general election, the first question that the media asked them was, oh, what's this about your publicity director threatening to kill your chief fundraiser? It was a smokescreen to cover up the fact of what the whole issue was really about. Now, as I said, I've got no proof. I've got no proof of any of this apart from that's fairly good circumstantial proof in a way that something's not exactly right. But... Uh, I had no more proof than that. After the general election, also the general election in which we didn't do so well, did we? We didn't do so well. I was actually on, uh, at the count where I said to uh, Michael Barnbrook, jokingly I hasten to add, yeah. I said to him, how many, uh, how many years have you been a member? When it was clear that all the results were going badly. That was a joke. Well, as you say, <laughs> it's not been a joke. But... but uh, <laughs>